easy to be inspired by what we see around with all our lovely coasts and uh, rolling hills and leafy hedgerows, roads, I should say. An artist from Puddletown takes great inspiration from our environment, and it's not just the countryside that does the job either, because uh, Paul Matthews has travelled right across the world for still life and for paintings, and focuses on portraits of wildlife that he finds as well. Uh, good morning to you, Paul. Hello, Lawrence. Thanks morning. for coming in uh, once again, particularly through this wretched weather we've had this morning. I know. <laughs> and you brought these uh, four magnificent paintings with you. Uh, if I can start off, I mean, it's been a few months since we caught up. Um, yes. What have you been up to since we last spoke? Um, getting more into portraiture. I, although I'm fundamentally a wildlife artist, I got more interested in that. There's not too much of a difference between wildlife and people anyway. Mm. Um, but I've started to do more of the portraits and that's why I'm trying to promote a bit more. I'm intrigued. The first uh, portrait that you bought in, I, I guess that frame is probably about four foot by two foot, something of that order. Yes. Big painting, so uh, well done physically uh, <laughs> taking those through the streets of Dorchester. What have yes. we got there? Who is that lady there with the, the frizzy hair? Oh, that's Maria. Um, it was a life model session I did. I, I sketched from life and um, just between sessions, she put on this cloak, and I thought she looked fantastic in that. I thought it'd make a perfect painting. So I did a quick sketch and took a few photos. And on the basis of that, I did the portrait. It's quite a large one. Yeah, it is. How long did it take you to complete that then? About four. No, I'm sorry, about 60 hours. That right. one, I guess. It's over a period of time though, because I work on a few paintings. Okay. Now, I'm intrigued by the one that's nearer to me here, the yes. landscape uh, painting that you've done. And let me tell the listener, it depicts a, a fox who's walking across the countryside. There are seagulls flying overhead in rather sullen grey skies. And in the foreground of the painting, there is all manner of rubbish that you might find on the beach before one of those fantastic beach clean uh, projects that goes around our county. There's all sorts of Coke cans and, and whatever. What's the message there that you're trying to get across then? Well, it's an environmental message. That's a, a landfill site. And the thing that I was trying to show is that although these things are made for recycling, all the cans and so forth, um, they still get just thrown into rubbish and taken off. Um, but that was painted about six years ago. Um, I thought it was something completely different. I thought by painting on on cans or soft drink cans, it um, would be something completely different. So you've actually and superimposed the crushed cans onto the painting itself? No, it's the other way around. The cans are the base, and I've painted on top of those. Got you. I was just looking at the bottom right-hand corner there. It looks like a crushed can. Oh, yeah, that, that is, yep. that's placed on top afterwards. Uh, yeah. Is that anywhere in particular in that county? Well, that it's, uh, it's based on Sherbourne. It's a uh, landfill site around Sherbourne. I've used my imagination quite a bit on that. And it actually was going to be awarded Wildlife Artist of the Year by the BBC. But because of um, the copyright law, um, the, the word shown uh, Coke cans, it just... Oh, uh, it just fell foul of the rules. Exactly. So one of the judges pointed that out and it just missed out. Oh, that must have been frustrating. Very, very frustrating. Oh dear, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, let, let's uh, just move along the line then. Uh, yes. What have we got next to the fox then? Who are those two uh, um, That's uh, Millie and Ellis. They're uh, friends of mine. They're daughters. I d I've done a portrait of them. But I sort of like, do it from life and photographs. My friend was a photographer anyway, so he took a lot of the photographs for it. Lovely ladies as well, with long braided hair there, and a, yes. a, a lovely smile as well. It's a, a very sort of uh, evocative picture, if you like. Yes, yeah, I wanted to have them like a feel of deep conversation, uh, rather than just sitting there and looking out into the picture. I thought it would make it more of an interesting picture. Oh, they're, they're all terrific. What we'll try yes. and do is get a, a photograph, so that obviously it's very difficult talking about paintings yes, when we're right. on the radio. Uh, but uh, if I could try and convey across the airwaves how uh, good these paintings are. Oh, thank what, you. What are, what are the next sort of projects you have on the horizon then? Um, What's next? It's, uh, I'm thinking of an indigenous, indigenous people doing portraits of them. Uh, like, because I go to Africa a uh, um, fair, uh, fair amount. Um, tribes around Africa like Samburu, Maasai and so forth and also some Asian um, people as well. I've been Just on, sorry. Been on, out to Mombasa so you saw oh, yes, some, yes. Uh, some magnificent sort of um, 
subjects to get yes, across there. Yes, yeah, I've been through Mombasa and um, there's people on the side of the road that look really interesting. Yeah, very much so. Uh, I'm sure you'll be uh, uh, well um, suited to the sort of paintings that you'd like to uh, to paint, Paul. Thank you ever so much for Thank coming you. in Thank this morning. Uh, Puddle Town based wildlife artist Paul Matthews joining us on our Dorset Lives this morning on BBC Radio Solent.